has a magic. Has a magic that takes hold of you, for better or for worse. And I did. I had come to Sudan and was interested in Sudan before I met Riag. And I know other people have been caught by the same magic. It is not a. I mean, Sudan is not a. It's not a very beautiful country. It's the people that are so charming. 29-year-old Emma McCune came to southern Sudan three years ago to help set up primary education. An ex-convent school girl, she met Riak Makar, commander of the Sudan People's Liberation Army, and fell in love. And after a year, actually, I wonder where she was, and then I met another friend who knew where she was, and I wrote to her an official letter, which was in a way official. <laughs> and, then? and then we met. She came, she drove, I think, how many miles? Um, must have been over a thousand. At their next meeting, Riak proposed, and Emma became the guerrilla commander's wife the first lady in a society of suffering. Hundreds of thousands of lives have been destroyed in 30 years of war and famine. Emma shares an impoverished lifestyle with the villagers. Like them, she lives in a hut made of mud and thatch with no electricity and few possessions. Water is carried from a well. The toilet is a hole in the ground and food is basic. The carbohydrate we eat is called Kisra. And uh, this is uh, um, made from uh, sorghum, which is pounded, then made into a paste. Uh, then this is spread over a sheet of metal on a hot fire. Um, they make a, a, a very thin pancake, which they then fold like a handkerchief. And this is then dipped into various stews. People often marry women that are considered good cooks. and. Uh, Anyway, I was not married for my cooking skills. Riak is leading a guerrilla war to win independence for southern Sudan from the northern government. Hmm? The south and the north are different. The north is Arab and Islamic. The south is Black Africa and Christian. And since 1955, we have been fighting ourselves on those bases. We have been the underdogs. Most tribes here are polygamous. The men can marry yeah. as many women as they can afford. Emma is Riak's second wife. Because of the war, there are a lot of women that would otherwise be unmarried if they didn't have a chance to be a second or a third wife. So, in fact, in a situation like southern Sudan, polygamy means that what women can bear children and be part of the family and not isolated. Yeah, it's a very open society. You never have to worry that your husband is having an extramarital affair because you'll hear about it, you'll be told about it. It's, it's not a secret. So how would you feel if some React's first wife came to live here? Well, she'd have to live in it. She, she would be... Uh, she'd be given a compound and we'd uh, have to live together. Every day in Sudan, hundreds die from disease and hunger. This month a new tragedy is emerging as an epidemic sweeps the region. 40,000 people have already died and one in three of these children in Emma's village are now threatened. But there is no medicine and little food. Meager rations are flown in by the United Nations when the security situation allows. A handful of aid workers struggle on, but lives are still being lost for want of the most simple supplies like milk. This baby died a few hours later.
As well as food and medicine, there is a desperate need for education. Emma wants to help set up more bush schools like this one. And the children are desperate to learn. These children have walked hundreds and hundreds of miles in search of schools. And they often do not ask for food, they ask for a, pen, a book and a pencil. And they're very, very keen. I mean, it's very difficult to get the international community to be interested in education in a war zone. It is very short-sighted to people not to be interested in education because what is the future for these people if they have no leaders? But for these children, nothing will change without an end to the war. Even now, the people of southern Sudan are bracing themselves for a new offensive from the bombs and bullets of the northern government. People are wary of war, but that does not mean that they would give up uh, the army struggle if it is the only alternative for them to be liberated. I am willing to lead them if they are committed to that objective. Fighting for death is a decision which, will be le uh, which is left to them. It's not my decision. If they don't want to continue the struggle, then I will have no army. If they want to continue the struggle, I will have an army that will grow till the liberation is over. I was left, left behind um, uh, when Riak had to go to the front line and I got rather lonely. And so I made a I've made a decision that I'm not, I'd rather be with Riak. I'd rather be in, even if it's dangerous, I'd rather be with him. Not for military reasons, not for political reasons, but just for human reasons, because I'd rather be with Riak. In 10 years time, it would be very nice to think that we were living in a peaceful, independent, sovereign state of southern Sudan, and perhaps on a little farm somewhere and, have, and living a very quiet and simple life. With children? With children.